In the time since I put out my last video, there have been several high profile pieces of content that have been created speaking about the topics that I have been covering here in this series, The Attention Economy. Now, it could just be that the algorithm is serving me those particular pieces of content because I have put out this video, but there's also probably a very good chance that since you've been watching my content and you've been watching this series, that you also have seen these particularly high profile pieces of content. People are interested in the topics that we're discussing, specifically the two things that have come up and what we're going to talk about today because it's the next section here. Remember, we said algorithms, machine learning, AI. When I say AI, what I'm specifically talking about, AI is broad. Actually, all of those things fall into artificial intelligence. But when I say AI, what I'm talking about is I am talking about the commercialization of artificial intelligence in a form that we will interact with as consumers. That has begun, and it's begun on two fronts that are very important to the trajectory of the attention economy. Basically, the two fronts are both in terms of content generation or content creation by artificial intelligence, and they are manifesting themselves and have over the last several months in the image generation and also text generation platforms that have been released to the public. The most important of them were created by a company called OpenAI, happened to be founded uh, in part by Elon Musk. He was an early founder of it, which I didn't know until very recently, but I have been saying since the spring, so almost a year now, I have been saying that uh, Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter, at the time just a proposed takeover of Twitter, was all about training AI. I've been very public in those statements. And so finding out that he was a part of OpenAI and that that artificial intelligence was trained on the data set of Twitter. In other words, it had access to all the tweets that are out there. And so it, it trained itself wasn't exactly surprising to me. And what I am talking about in this particular case, and this is something that has been getting a lot of press in the time since I put out the last video, is the chat GPT algorithm and platform. And what this is, is it is an AI algorithm that you can speak to conversationally and that you can ask it questions and it will go out into the internet and search for answers. So you can do all kinds of things from just asking it the same types of things that you would ask Siri to something like asking it to write song lyrics in the style of Bob Dylan or to write a response to a particular event, write a news event in the style of an Elon Musk tweet, things like that, which is very, very interesting. Also, if it gets something wrong, you can conversationally tell it, no, I think you got that wrong, and you can actually reason through the answer with it. So just in the last two weeks, Microsoft has announced that they have a deal with OpenAI, and they are going to integrate ChatGPT into Bing. So search is about to change. The other item, the other, let's say, project, that is uh, very, very important, not fully released to the public. This is the image generation that is also from uh, the OpenAI group, and this is called Dall E. Now it's at Dall E2, so Dall E version two. And this, you basically it's the same sort of idea. You say, uh, "Do show me a picture of a dog swimming in a pool." And it can create actually a photorealistic. It looks just like a photo. That even, even with, you know, focus at different perspectives that you can tell it where you want the focus, all of that, even like a camera, but that dog never existed. It can create images of, of people and faces. I've seen some very interesting ones. What's available to the public is a little bit of a scaled down version, but still very effective. A platform you've probably seen some images from already called Mid Journey. If you haven't, go and just search Mid Journey, 
go and Google Mid Journey and you'll see images and you'll say, oh, that's what it is, where you can basically just tell it, hey, I want a picture of this in words. And then you sort of trust it to create it. And it will create a whole bunch of different ones and then you can select what you like. People are now actually getting to the point where with Mid Journey, they are teaching classes on how to correctly prompt the machine to create an image that you want, how to tell it the style, how to tell, so they figured it out. That part to me is very interesting. That part is very interesting. Why is it interesting? Well, both of these platforms, both of these algorithms, what are they fundamentally doing? Their job is, their utility function, in other words, the core thing that it is that they're looking for is give me what I want to see or give me what I want to read, which means what? If you can give me what I want to see, William Mortensen wrote a book in 1937 called The Command to Look. And I believe that the subtitle is something like A Master Photographer's Technique for Capturing the Human Gaze or Controlling the Human Gaze, something like that. The idea here is what do I want to see? I'm going to tell you in words, and then you show it back to me, many different versions, and I say, boom, I want that. It's kind of like a graphic designer, but it could show things at, at it, and it takes a while to create these now, but it could show it to you many different versions, and you can basically select. These are still images, and chat-like, or maybe article-length content, text content. What happens, though, when it's able to provide video and it's able to provide long-form content on demand? People are saying that individuals are going to lose their jobs. Oh, uh, videographers, uh, photographers, all of this. This is not the real concern. See, the real concern we can already see happening in people who are teaching classes, as I said, teaching classes on how to prompt the machine to give you what you want. Because what's really happening? It used to be us training the AI, but now the tables have flipped. The AI is training us. It's training us to speak to it in a way where it can better understand what it is that we want so it can serve us what we want nonstop. And then the question becomes, how do we get away from our screens? Right now we've talked about going down a rabbit hole. When human created content, the machine is able to find enough human related content to capture your attention. What if it's no longer limited by what humans could create? What if it can continue to learn in the way that it is, what it is that you want to see and then provide it to you? What if it can do this, not just uh, as a platform, but in conversationally as let's say an icon of a person that you would very much like to look at in a voice that you would very much like to hear saying things to you that it knows you want to hear more than you even know it. Things that you may even be hiding from yourself or not willing to admit to yourself that you want, it will know just by your underlying behavior. So when I said I was going to show you the bars of the cage. I was going to show you the blueprint of the plantation. This is the slavery of the attention economy. When it is your attention that is the commodity and this is the means of capturing it, completely automated as a machine that may very well be at this point because of the singularity out of anyone's control. So what we're gonna talk about as we move forward is the implications of this and also how we might mitigate it. The things that we might do to not fall into where we are falling as individuals, as communities. So something that we can share with one another. I've got some thoughts on it. I'm gonna share that with you as we move forward in this series, The Attention Economy.